Hey guys, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to open episode 2 of the DaVinci Resolve Playbook. If you missed the first episode of the DaVinci Resolve Playbook, don't worry, don't click off this video just yet. Uh, these aren't linear editing tutorials, more so a goodie bag of different tips and tricks compiled throughout the editing page to make you become a more proficient editor with DaVinci Resolve. And as stated in episode one, I am a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer. So uh, let's have a look at tip one. Sometimes there is a need to move media between timelines or maybe an entire section of a timeline to a different timeline. And of course, this can be done by copying the selection in timeline one or copying a clip then open in timeline 2 and paste in the material. However, I find this approach a little tedious and somewhat moving around blindly, but back in DaVinci Resolve 15, we were given the option of tabbed timelines. So you don't have to continually go back and forth to the media pool to jump between timelines. To get here, you hit this button. And now we can now jump back and forth between the two timelines. However, I still feel like we're navigating blindly and I want a more intuitive way of jumping back and forth. Well, again, in Resolve 15, we were given stacked timelines where you can stack entirely composed timelines on top of each other. And we can get here by pressing this button. Yet you may notice that you cannot select timeline two, and that's because it's open here in the tabbed area. So we need to close that. Now with two stacked timelines, I can move individual clips or a section across multiple tracks across the two timelines. Although this is mainly to adjust two timelines on the fly, but yeah, for copying clips over, also very useful. But what about copying clips across projects? Because it's not as if we can just go into the media pool and open an existing project, right? Well, somewhat you kind of can. First, you need to head back out into the project manager homepage, which you can do so by clicking the home icon, and then right click anywhere. It can be on a project, it can be in the blank space and select project switching. And then open the secondary project in which you would like to coincide with your current edit. Here, where it has the project title, you're going to click this drop down menu and then open the other project. Now you can do this with a number of projects and it's going to allow you to quickly utilize a pre-constructed edit from a different project. So you're not going to have to rebuild that in your new project or you're not going to have to uh, render it out from your old project and bring it back in. But it is important to note that uh, dynamic project switching is a RAM heavy process. So the more projects you have open, uh, it, you might find uh, Resolve putting more stress on your computer. And likewise, if you just have a poor, um, not a poor, but a low performing computer, um, dynamic project switching in general is going to make things run slightly slower again depending on how many projects you have open but if you're just looking to bring in that one uh, item yeah every single video perhaps it's a pre-rendered uh, logo a piece of music that you have in every single video uh, you don't have to use dynamic project switching instead we can use something called power bins and power bins allow you to use the same video file audio clip or still image throughout every single project indefinitely but looking at the screen, you might think, uh, Lewis, where is the power bin? Well, you actually need to bring it into view and you can do so by selecting view, show power bin, and you can now add media into this bin, also known as a folder. And it will appear in every project until you remove the item or hide the power bin. So it's important to remember that uh, Resolve works on a database system. So that file or those files that you put into the power bin, uh, it's not as if that they've been duplicated or moved to a different location. So they're always gonna be in every project that connection is still linked to the original location when put into the power bin. So as long as you don't rename or move the folder, uh, that file, as I said earlier, will be there indefinitely. I don't necessarily recommend putting a ton of files into the power bin, uh, more so for an organization point of view rather than uh, a processing, but I like to use it for pre-rendered graphics, logos and music that I tend to use often. So in each episode, I'm going to drop a number of keyboard shortcuts. I love keyboard shortcuts and I want to make sure that they're not kind of wholly obvious if they are uh, kind of coming out of them from a unique angle. And today for the first one, we're going to look at how you can adjust linked video or linked audio uh, without unlinking the audio or video. I'm sure during every edit, or at least once every few edits, you may have linked video and audio and you need to extend the audio into the next sequence, perhaps to fade out. And oh, hey, by the way, you can easily fade out any video or audio by just pulling these white handles inward. Or perhaps you want to create a J or L cut, which is to have the video overlap one area of the preceding audio or the audio that come before it. Either way, it requires you to unlink the video and audio, right? 
Now you can do this by deactivating all links, which is Control Shift L, or selecting the video and audio and either right clicking and selecting Link or Control Alt L. Alternatively, and much easier, you can hold Alt while selecting either the video or the audio, then extend or decrease that specific clip. When you hold Alt before selecting linked media, it only selects the video or the audio. The next shortcut is Control T, and this is to add a transition to your edit. But this needs to be pressed when you actually have an edit point selected and an edit point being the area where the media ends or starts. And this, by the way, you can quickly jump to the closest edit to your playhead by clicking V. The shortcut is incredibly useful and time saving because you don't have to keep opening up your effects panel to find that transition. But of course, it's only adding the one specific transition. Now, if you like uh, a specific transition more so than the default one, which would be a cross dissolve, you can open up the effects library, find a transition, say a blur dissolve, right click, and then select set as default transition. Now, you may have noticed in that example, when I clicked Control T, as I selected the edit point of linked media, you would have noticed that the transition is added to both the video and the audio. Sometimes this isn't useful if we don't want the audio to cross fade or the video to cross dissolve if you add in the transition to the audio. Therefore, like the previous shortcut, if you select the edit point but initially hold Alt, you are only going to highlight the edit point of the selected video or the selected audio. And upon hitting Control T, it will only be added to the one media, audio or video, not both. So 2020, I think that we can all kind of agree that um, most cameras, low budget cameras, say a thousand pound, a thousand dollars, around that price point, you're still gonna get 4K, 24 frames per second. But when you wanna start getting 60 frames, 120 frames uh, for 4K, the price point is gonna go up. Or if on those lower budget models, you're gonna to have to drop down to 1080p. Now, when you include 1080 into a 4K timeline, for the most part, I think many people can get away with just increasing the scale because if it's just being put up onto YouTube um, uh, for like online content, vlogging, that sort of thing, travel videos, I mean, for the most part, I think it's like 47 or like 51% of people watch YouTube on their phone and that's streamed for the most part at 720p. So I think you can get away with it. However, if you need that 1080 or 720 upscale to be um, more mathematically correct in the upscale, then you can use DaVinci Resolve's feature called Superscale. Back in Resolve 15, a new upscaling feature was introduced that can resize HD to 8K. It's called Superscale. Now Resolve already has a fantastic rescaling filter, which you can set up accordingly to the requirements of your project, either in the setup menu or in the inspector. But the Superscale tool is different. It uses an advanced algorithm that improves image detail upon enlarging. With that, it means it will be processor intensive operation, which can slow your footage down. Now I can edit 4K footage back uh, perfectly fine, but for the first several seconds of a clip that I enlarged from 1080 to 4K, I was only getting eight to nine frames per second. So take that into account when using. But the tool is more for standard definition media in a 4K timeline, or for when you need to zoom way into a 1080p clip on a timeline that already has a significantly higher resolution. The super scale isn't as easily accessible as many other features. You won't find it in the inspector nor any menu panels, but to get to the super scale options, you need to right click your media and select clip attributes. From there, you will find the super scale menu at the bottom of the video tab with three settings to work with. Super scale, sharpness, and noise reduction. The first setting changes the size of the file. You can choose from two times to four times and six times. Obviously this correlates with the size of your project and the sharpness and noise reduction settings will help you fine tune the resize. Ultimately, this is gonna be at your discretion to see what works best for your file. So this is a zoomed in screenshot at 200% with the super scaled image on the right. It was a 720p file super scale to fit a 4K timeline. To be honest, I'm not too sure how well this comparison image is gonna be conveyed after the results has been exported at a friendly export setting and then further compressed by YouTube. But I do encourage you to test out this super scale feature as there is a significant difference in quality between Resolve's standard resize filter and the super scale feature. Uh, it's pretty magical. Okay guys, that is me done for another episode here today. Now, I've been using DaVinci Resolve now uh, for editing for a number of years. I've been a certified trainer, I think for the last three. And obviously the software has grown dramatically in popularity for editing over the last few years as well. If you're after some specific tips or there's something that you know, you're still quite confused on on the video edit page, drop a comment 
and uh, we'll see if we can include it in future playbook episodes. Till next time.